Let us begin today. Mano Buddha Hamkara. Chittani Naham. Nacha Shutra Jube. Nacha Grana Nitri. Nacha Bhuma Bhumi. Nate Jona Bayu. Chidananda Rupa Shiboham 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 Is okay? Microphone? Microphone is all right? Okay. Mm. A little uh, uh, yeah. Yesterday, we had a nice the meeting, congregation of all monks and devotees from different places. They all came over there in the San Francisco to remember Swami Prabhuddhananda Ji. It was a wonderful meeting, it was a nice meeting. And you know the monk's life, it's okay, it's the monk's life is uh, different. We, we are not afraid of death because we have already given our whatever after the yajna, after the death, the kriya karma, we have already done. So we are already dead to the world, so there is no. So they were all making jokes and all fun. Someone was telling the other, see how wonderful program, food and discussion. In my memorial service, it should be better than this. <laughs> <laughs> then the other one said, who knows that you are not conducting my memorial service, maybe that I will. So there's no fear of death. Why there is no fear of death? Not that, just because we have left our heart and home, we don't have that way any family attachment. So the fear, no fear of death, not like that. Actually, maybe that in a, in a joking mood is different. Actually, it should be a knowledge. And that knowledge, it gives a wonderful strength in the mind. What is that knowledge? <coughs> that knowledge that I cannot die. I am only changing my body, I am only changing my places, that's all. But I cannot die. That conviction. When that conviction comes, when you can properly meditate. This is very special. When we can properly meditate, a strength comes inside the mind. And we are not at all afraid of death. And why this fear, it goes away? Because of the knowledge. What is that knowledge? That I am eternal. How that knowledge comes, that they are explaining. In the Patanjali Yoga Darshan, we are studying that, that this is the way the knowledge comes. And we have understood that knowledge can come if we can control our senses. If we can control our mind in total, if we can control our mind, what is meditation? The controlling of the mind. And what is mind? all our thoughts. What are those thoughts? Impressions of this life, impressions of past life. 
in sanskrit it say they say samskara samskara means impressions where from the impression comes in this life from the experiences and also some of the experiences we will be studying today it comes from the past life and that proves that there is a past life the moment there is a past life there is a karma phala naturally when we were in the previous births previous that previous that how it is happening because of the result of the work so this is go goes on in a circle and very interesting circle and who is the maker me who is enjoying me who is suffering me and how can i get rid of all this by taking a resolution that's all i am not going to suffer any more just one resolution what you have to do stop the samskara how to stop the samskara by countering the bad samskara with good samskara how can i counter the bad samskara with good one with the help of the guru how guru helps us by giving the name a holy name of god how that name helps us by repeating that constantly and remembering the qualities of that particular god all gods are naturally they are very kind generous helpful dedicated unselfish so all those qualities i am imbibing and what is happening there are two types of samskara which gives one type of samskara that gives pain another gives joy now by inculcating the samskara of god i am getting the samskaras of joy when it ultimately the whole fulfillment of joy comes that called bliss i can control my whole body even i can change my being my personality into divine this is the whole of yoga why people are mad to practice yoga because this is the secret you can control everything everything comes within your fist everything comes within your hand you can do anything you are the master but the problem is only in one place we cannot control our mind we if we can control our mind we can become the master but why we cannot control our mind we were studying the in the sadhana path in the second chapter the problem is we have to practice what are the things pancha klesha again again and again these words will come we have to remember pancha means five klesha means afflictions afflictions comes from what impressions so the five different type of impressions that gives us brings us unhappiness pancha klesha in sanskrit klesha means suffering and what are that the beginning is avidya we know that beginning of the pancha klesha is avidya so vidya and avidya the moment there is vidya knowledge true knowledge perfect knowledge you are happy when there is not that knowledge you are unhappy you are suffering this is the only reason one person is coming and touching the feet of another why the guru guram namaste nata loka bandha karunna sindham patita bhavabdho all these things are there that person he has already crossed those problems now he is sitting very quietly enjoying and to get that knowledge people are going to him accepting him as a guru as a preceptor as a master 
and listening from him and practicing. And what the Guru says, you are God yourself, why you are suffering, why you are crying. Kim Rodashi Sake, Tui Sarva Shakti, why you are crying. In the Vedanta, they don't give initiation, they give instructions. Because the, the followers of Vedanta, the followers of Advaita Vedanta, I must say, in Vedanta there are Advaita, Vishishta Advaita and Dvaita. And the Advaita, they don't give initiation, they only give instructions. And Durvara Samsara Dhavagni Taptam Dodhu Omanam Drudhishtvatihi Bhitam Prapannam Paripahi Mritto Sharannam Anyat Yadaham Najane Except you, I don't know anything. Sharannam Anyat Yadaham Najane Aham means I, Najane, I don't know anything except you. Who are you? My Guru. Why I am behaving like this? Because for me, this whole world is just like the burning fire. Wherever I go, I am getting that fire. It's burning me. Durvara samsara davagni taptam. Samsara means the whole this world, this, the life that I see in this world. Davagni taptam. <laughs> the one elderly couple, I was talking with them. And naturally, as it goes, the husband was telling, you know, my wife in the beginning never listened to me. Now you are slow, she is slowly accepting me. In the point, it, some time came that she was thinking to divorce me. And as because she didn't divorce me, now she is enjoying. And she was telling, very of course, in a very low voice, why you have not given me the divorce. I would have been happy this time. <laughs> See, it goes on like this. Why? Because adjustment. You have to have a lot of adjustment. And who can adjust? Those who can subdue their ego. All our law, lawyer friends are so happy because so much of divorces. The more divorces, the more cases, the more earnings, so they are happy, happy. And one young couple, hardly two, three year, two, three months they married and there's a little hustles. And a lawyer friend, he was constantly telling them, no problem, I am there, just come to me. Within six months, you will get divorced. I told him, what is this? Just for your little money, why you were Telling them like that, it's nothing, no problem. Two brothers, two sisters, they always, they, because of the ego, because of the identity, it's all clashes are there. Why should, then I told, you better read the books of Holy Mother. You will listen how the mother is instructing you. Develop sacrifice, attitude of sacrifice. What you have to sacrifice? Some of the things that you don't like, still you are adjusting because you are in the family. It's a short of a sacrifice. What happens? Peace. Any type of sacrifice will bring you peace. That's sure. So that is the way the whole world goes. Don't think that be, being a monk, everybody is happy. No, not like that. You have to adjust in many ways. In the ashrama, there are so many different types of people are there, in, among the monastics, different type. In, the, in one room there are four. And one, he has come to become a monk and he thinks that he should learn music. And he gets time only in the noon time. When after, because we get up at 2.30, 3.30, very early morning in our uh, pre, uh, brahmachari days, so noon, that one hour sleep was very much essential, but that is his time for practicing uh, this music, song. And his voice was so harsh, and, but 
he don't understand that he will be practicing sa re ga all this and it is so difficult now you have to adjust how by placing the pillow on your ear <laughs> somehow you sleep then after some time you get adjusted then somehow our incher swami ji came to know then he said why don't you go to that field there is a small hut there the people they uh, sit over there to look after the crops that is coming up so the animals should not come birds should not come why don't you go and sit over there and sing so that those people can get also one hour rest and the birds will never come <laughs> so, and your music practice will be also be there so don't, don't you think the adjustment this really everything everywhere there are so many brahmacharins and monks that they are very qualified but they never get the opportunity to express themselves they will never get the opportunity but they will adjust they are very qualified capable but they don't get the opportunity they are always the subordinates those who are in charges whatever they want they have to, you have to follow that all adjustment in everywhere in every sphere of life how that is possible the more you are ego less the problem comes from the avidya what is that avidya i think i am that is the avidya so from there it goes then comes next avidya asmita this ego avidya is ignorance what is that ignorance i am and that from that ignorance whatever i see i see in my own way sometime which is very bad thing but he will see it and it is good why you say bad so this way always what which is not correct we try to see that because of our ahankara good and this way it goes and that is called avidya then comes ahankara then comes raga raga means attachment dvesha aversion abhinivesha this is the point that we were discussing abhinivesha means the fear of death this is very important we will come to that point now as we were discussing abhidya asmita raga desha abhinivesha this pancha klesha of the pancha klesha first comes the abhidya what is that abhidya we have already discussed so we'll just read that anitya ashuchi dukha anatma su nitya shuchi sukha atma khyati avidya which is anitya not permanent thinking that as permanent ashuchi which is not pure at all impure think that as pure the painful the dukha they think it is joy anatma su which is non self they think it is self so this comes this ignorance comes because of this avidya is the root cause and then avidya the definition of avidya is anitya ashuchi dukha anatma su nitya permanent shuchi pure dukha sukha happiness and atma khyati it is atman we think like that that next comes asmita what is that i what is that ahamkara what is that ego the purusha they say oh, very nicely they are mentioning purusha means the consciousness it mingled with the mind mind of the human being and that mind because of the reflection it start thinking i am purusha that's called basking in the reflected reflected glory you will see the minister or the kings they are to some extent humble good people sometimes but their assistants they are very rude oh you cannot do this you cannot do that 
and they all people are going to them oh can you please help me can you please do this can you because they cannot they think they cannot go directly to that minister directly to that king so they are taking the help of the assistants and assistants are growing growing ego similarly within us atman which is very pure it is only consciousness atman is only consciousness but it reflects in our mind it's a little technical thing it is reflecting it within our mind the mind that we know understand something is reflected over that and we think the mind is living conscious it can take decision everything but not so that is called asmita the reflected atman on the mind is called asmita i consciousness so this is the drig purusha drig means purusha purusha means the self which is unchangeable and darshana means buddhi chitta always changeable but they come in one point as if they are actually this darshana the mind is the self now this sun suddenly goes away why how because the moon comes in the line of the sun is the earth there is the sun in between moons uh, moon comes and we say we cannot see the sun such a big that sun is nowhere why because of that moon and other way we always say the sun's light is so scorching not in chicago it is all the time comfortable but in our country sun light means very very scorching you know they have we have the habit of uh, all the time uh, copying imitating so here the people they are basking in the sun they are taking the sun ray and there in our country all the time we are burning in the sun but still if you go to andaman and all the places they will be bathing in that way and basking i told what is it this so much sun is here those people they don't get the sun so they come over here but you people are necessarily doing it because imitation we feel like doing the imitation all the europeans are doing so let us also do but imitation of whom here the imitation not of the atman but the reflected glory of the atman the mind is taking all the credit that is the problem so what is asmita asmita means reflection of the atman on our mind and the mind says i i i i will do it i can do it i cannot do it like this so this is called asmita that is also klesha one of the klesha the first is pancha klesha avidya then comes asmita then comes raga what is raga attachment and why we get attached because it's so good to me is someone now the children who ever come over here i give them chocolates and after coming first second third time they understand that if they go they will get the chocolate they themselves will go and knock they are getting attachment to me why because of the chocolate they get something because of the candies but suppose i behaved roughly with the children they will never come to me so the attachment the raga comes only with the impression of the happiness if somebody is coming to me and giving me the affection the love attachment grow and when it is not it is not so obviously we have to be very very cautious some people one person was married only 3 4 months and as usual the indian gentleman he thought i will marry from india from our country when the people come over here they develop great love for their own motherland so 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 he was thinking 
that I will marry from my country, they will be, the girl will be very good, etc. But now our girls over there are very clever, they know green card. <laughs> so she married only to get the green card. And the moment she got the green card, she said goodbye. Uh, this person is suffering. He has closed the door, only lying down, not talking with anybody, not doing anything. And everybody, all his friends and relatives are very, very suffering. They told Swamiji, why like this? I would say, I cannot help in other way, but I will pray to Thakur to give him good buddhi, sad buddhi. Buddhi means this discriminating power. I was not knowing her before six months. I don't know her after six months. Why should I ruin my life only for six months? So that is the discrimination one must have. Attachment, at the same time, discrimination. If the attachment with discrimination is there, then there is no problem. But if there is no discrimination, a lot of suffering, lot of suffering. So that is the teaching of our Shastras. So what is Raga? Attachment. Attachment to what? Which gives us, gives uh, the good impression so, Sukhanusai Raga, attachment to thought of pleasure. Thought of pleasure is that attachment. And Dukhanusai Dvesha, Desha means aversion. Aversion is that thought which dwells on pain. Swami Vivekananda is all the time asking, Sri Ramakrishna is also again and again in the gospel, Bichara, Bichara, Bichara. What is that Bichara? What is the discrimination? The good and bad. What is good and what is bad? That which is permanent, that is good for us. And that is not permanent, is not good for us. So here we find that uh, Raga and Dvesha. And then afterwards come Obhinivesha. This is the wonderful discussion Swami Vivekananda he did in his uh, Raja Yoga. Sarasabahi Bidusho Opi Tatha Ruda Abhinivesha. Sarasabahi. Sarasabahi means in Sanskrit, Sarasabahi. Bahi means carrying. What they are carrying? Impressions. Impressions of what? Of the past life. And even the educated person, intelligent person, they are also bound by this. What is Obhinivesha? Fear of death. Now, you will find even an ant is fear of death. It is having that fear of death. The elephant is also having the fear of death. Where from they learned it? The fear of death? Without some people in the modern science, they say, from the experience only, we learn. That is why Swami Vivekananda is giving this argument. This clinging to life, you see, is manifested in every animal. In India, this clinging to life has been one of the arguments to prove the past experience and existence. Majority of the people, they will never believe the, the karma phala and the past life. Whatever is there in this life only. So let us enjoy, they say. It's not like that. Because every action that has a result. So whatever the action you are doing now, where the result will go? Suppose we are torturing someone secretly. And the police authority, they could not know that uh, this is, I am doing like this. Do you think that everything will go like that and we are safe? No, not at all. What is the basis of morality? Swami Vivekananda asking this question. What is the basis of morality? Why should I be moral? Why should I not hurt others? Why should I not cheat others? Because by doing that, ultimately, I am cheating, hurting myself, but I don't know. And this moment, this life, I think, 
by cheating others, I am earning a lot of money and then enjoying. And yesterday, one of my, our devotees, he was telling that if you purchase the first class ticket, it is good. He was thinking that I can come comfortably by lying down. I was also thinking if I travel by that way, then in this morning I'll be fresh. But after that, and then when I boarded, I found that next line, the moment it is the first class is ending, next line I'm sitting. Almost only say three feet, uh, five feet like that. And they also cannot uh, sleep like that because their chairs are also the same. Then I thought somehow just by mistake, I have saved $200. Now they are also not getting the sleep, I am also not getting the sleep because the sitting arrangement is the same. But those people are very happy. Why? Because in the announcement, when the boarding started, the first class passenger come first, then they elbowed out everybody and then came first and they are so happy. That much only. And somehow I don't know why the priority passenger I got on my boarding pass, priority passenger, perhaps seeing me they thought yeah, I should give, which they give priority to me. I got the priority. And they are going on calling A, B. I was not what is, where is nothing? Nothing is written. So I took it to that uh, counter. I told, what is my number? Oh my God, you are a priority passenger. Come. And I also got very proud. <laughs> okay. So what is this? Priority passenger and all first class. And a little bit of comfort and nothing else. And they were going on serving so many things in the first class and majority of the people who were saying, no, thank you, no, thank you. Then what? <laughs> you cannot eat, you cannot sleep, but you have paid $200 extra. So this is the only, if you think in a bichara, discrimination, you will see the life is so simple. You are always happy wherever you are if you can think in that way. So that is called Sukhanusai Raga, Dukhanusai Dvesha, and then the impression comes, life after life, the impression is coming. Impression of what? Fear of death. Fear of death, it belongs to everyone, Swamiji is telling. So this is the experience. For instance, if it be true that all our knowledge has come from experience, then it is sure that that which we never experienced, we cannot imagine or understand. So, soon, as soon as the chickens are hatched, they begin to pick up food. Many times it has been seen where ducks have been hatched by hens. As soon as they come out of the eggs, they flew to the water. And the mother thought that they would be drowned. But the mother is the, ch the chicken, so she never... So like that, if experience be the only source of knowledge, now the argument is, if experience be the only source of knowledge where these chicks learn to pick up food, or the ducklings, that the water was their natural element? Where from they? Because if they were just born. Where from the experience came, they never, never worked. So the impression, that proves the impressions. So that is the impressions and that is called samaskara. So then, if you say it is instinct, what is this instinct? We have many instincts in ourselves. For instance, you play the piano and remember when you first learned how carefully you had to put your fingers on the black and white keys. After long years of practice, you can talk with your friends while your fingers will play mechanically. So obviously there is an experience, practice. The naturally, instinct is nothing but the practice. The instinct means what? Nothing but the practice. So, with every work, 
by practice it becomes instinct and it becomes automatic. In the language of the yogi, instinct is involved reason. Involved reason. The afterwards he is telling, therefore, it is perfectly logical to think that all we call instinct in this world is simply involved reason. Reason cannot come without experience. All instinct is therefore the result of past experiences. So why this argument? Unless and until we accept rebirth theory, that is very important, no one will be moral. No one will try to practice the morality and forget about the religion. After the morality, perfectly practiced religious life begins. Experience of the mind transmitted through the body and it is called the theory of reincarnation. All our knowledge, perception, reason, instinct must come through that one channel we call experience and all that we now call instinct is the result of past experiences. And this way the recurring experiences of various fears in course of time produce this clinging to life. This clinging to life means as we are Sarasabahi Bidusho Opi that Sarasabahi means carrying on and on Abhinivesha. This is one of the Panchaklesha, the fear of death. Panchaklesha. So we began with that. The jokingly we say we never care of, of death and all this. One gentleman yesterday he was telling, I can drive the car more than 100, 120 miles per hour. And I can reach from California to Chicago by two days. There's no problem for me. One Swami told, but you should not drive so fast. You can kill yourself. I don't bother about death, he was telling. So you don't bother about death, but what about the others? You are also hitting someone and then creating problem for them. If not hitting someone, suppose you are just over there, some accident, and then you die, at least two hours, all people will suffer because of the congestion. Police will come, this, that thing will go. Why the others will suffer? Just because of your this carelessness. So not that one person will go and in the army, they always teach. It is not the question of death. It is a question of killing. You are not going to fight over there in the border, on the border of our country to die, to sacrifice your life for the sake of your motherland. No, you are going to kill your enemies. So that is the way they always say, getting killed and death is not much thing. But you have to fight, protect your land by killing others, your enemies. So the death means what? Cessation of this body? No. Our question is not that type of fearlessness. Our discussion, the fearlessness by understanding the truth. What is the truth? This body is not permanent. That you all know. I was seeing that Swami, young, they were showing the 40 years of the experiences the life of Swami Prabhupada ji and some of the very old Swamis, one or two, they were there. They were so good looking, handsome. And in the young days, everybody was clapping, oh Swami, you were so good, with the coat and all this. They were there, very good looking. Now he said like that, is it me? <laughs> he was asking, do you think it is me? <laughs> now his whole body, because of the age, and it is inevitable. No one can say that I am going to leave and be beautiful like this. Sometimes some people who knows me and they'll be, oh, Swamiji, you are getting old. I am getting old. 
and you are also growing along with me. So I see you in that way and you also. So that is the inevitable, but people don't like to believe that. Why? They like to, like to cling to the life and that is Klesha. Because we cannot survive, we cannot live, and that is one of the last glacier. What is the Sanskrit name of that? Abhinivesha. Usually, the Abhinivesha means attention. We are giving that attention to Abhinivesha. And this is Abhinivesha, and Swami Vivekananda, he is giving this argument. Chitta Vittis, the mind waves, how can they be controlled? Swamiji is asking the question. A man says something very hard to me. Now this is very interesting. Many people, even the ladies, they will be coming and asking the Swamiji, how can I control my anger? Now this is the answer Swami Vivekananda is giving. And after learning this, if you practice any wrong, you cannot show me because this is Vivekananda. <laughs> And here, this Swamiji is telling, a man sometimes says something very harsh to me. And I begin to feel angry and forget myself, identify myself with anger. Now, in the beginning, I was not angry. And when I heard those harsh words about me, what happens? The reaction in the mind? I, I the self, I the consciousness, identify with the anger. And the moment it becomes like that, and then I immediately I think, I am angry, I am going to be angry. So this is the stages. Now the, when they say something, identify myself with anger, when the first began the abuse, I thought, I am going to be angry. Anger was one thing, I was separate than anger. These feelings have been, have to be controlled in the germ at the root. To conquer the anger, if we understand, I am going to be angry. And if you control at the root, at the germ, in the beginning, I am not going to be angry. What happens? You are safe from anger. So with the vast majority of mankind, the fine state of these passions are not even known because that is in the subconscious mind. So there are in the mind, there are three levels. One is subconscious, another is conscious, and then superconscious. What we are trying in the life of religion spirituality, good life, moral life, to reach to that super conscious state of mind. And now we live on the conscious level of mind. But sometimes we can understand subconscious mind also. Suddenly some thought is coming. Where from it comes? We will discuss again and again all those things because this is a science. Controlling of the mind is not simply just ordinary practice. It's a science. You have to understand the science. But the ordinary people don't have the patience and time. So what did they do? They go to a teacher and teacher will slowly, slowly stop the light and there will be a music and there's a cool breeze and you close your eyes and particularly by the side of the ocean and that by the side of the show like that they are sitting they are comfortable and they get up and they say i was taking the seven day course on meditation and i'm then they become the teacher after seven days so then nothing wrong some practices is going on but unless and until you understand the root of it science of it it is not permanent. Why? We will read afterwards. Because all these samskaras are playing with us. When you are trying to concentrate, you go on, say no, no, no to the samskaras. They say, okay, they will be outside. And will be waiting. The moment that situation comes, immediately it will enter. 
as the people who are trying to avoid the smoking, the chain smokers, and they try to avoid the smoking, and after six months, they think, oh, I'm free from smoking, but again, in the company of their friends, that habit, and they see that the people are smoking as if they're enjoying that again that samskara which became very subtle hiding somewhere again comes so that way all our samskaras are there what we have to we, we must do we must burn them if you can burn them let them be there like the seeds that has been burned if you throw them it's not going to germinate that is called you yoga so this our, here we find that Swamiji is telling, we have to be careful about our anger, our subtle mind. And how we can know our subtle mind? Bhagavan Sri Ramakrishna is telling, go to a holy person. Listen to him. Hear from him. Satsanga in Sanskrit in Hindi they say Sat Sang. Sat means holy. Sangha means company. In the holy company you hear very good words. Only hearing on do. You have to ponder over that. And for that you have to go in a solitude. In a secluded place all alone. Even without your iPhone or iPad. Otherwise, those iPhone and iPad and all those connections, those subtle samskaras, okay, let me see what is happening in the outside world. I am alone. I am not connected with anything. But let me see what is happening in the world. You go to that and you see something, all the samskaras come. So it goes like this. So obviously, you have to be totally alone. How can you leave? You have to concentrate, ponder over the words of the holy people. And that is called Nirjan Basa. And very isolation, all alone. Only you can take the help of some of your friends of the same mindedness. If you have the same minded some friends, it is good. Because you make a routine, early morning at 3.30, 4 you will get up. I have come to Ganges. Only three days we will stay over here. We will get up at 4.30. Then we will go to the shrine. We will meditate at least one hour. Then we will chant half an hour. Then other work we will do. Suppose you are feeling sleepy. Other friends will say, hey, why are you are sleeping? We have made this routine. Let us go. Uh, you will be forced to go. Or suppose your other friends, the two of your friends are getting up, getting ready. Even if you are feeling sleepy, you will feel shy. Oh, these people are getting ready. I must also go. Otherwise, what they will think. So that is a good company. So that way, we need some company of good friends. of the same. And then this practice you are going on, doing, doing, doing. It becomes a habit. And that through that habit, whatever the samskara is trying to come again and again, it gets burnt as if it cannot harm you. So that is why Swamiji is telling that you have to. Sometimes the anger is coming within me. You can see that in the subconscious mind. And you can immediately understand if I am angry, what is going to be the result? What is going to happen if I am angry unnecessarily? I am disturbing my mind. This has been my brain. So it is not necessary at all. You stop that anger over there. When it was trying to sprout, you stop over there. That is called yogi. Yogi means always attest. Yogi doesn't mean that he must not eat or he should not have the clothings or constantly living in the Himalayas or doing this feat and that, not like that. Yogi means a very intelligent man, always watching his own mind and changing impressions in the subconscious mind. 
When the subconscious mind is totally changed, everything will be good. Sometimes we see very bad dreams. Where from the dreams come? From the impressions. And why when I was awake, the dream never comes? Because that time mind is active. So the subconscious mind cannot get the chance to say anything. When your active mind is dormant, sleeping, then from the subconscious mind, it sends all the impressions. And I see, oh my God, what is happening? Sometimes it is very good, sometimes it is so bad. And two ladies, in the same day, they told me two different stories about their dream. One was telling, Swamiji, yesterday night I saw a horrible dream. It was so terrible. And then suddenly I heard your voice. She has taken initiation from me. Your voice and you are asking me, why you are not taking the name of God that I have given to you? And I started repeating that name. And then slowly that fear went away. Where from this dream came? Subconscious mind. And then with the conscious mind, subconscious mind, another thing is there, guru and the mantra. And I was not there in, his, in her dream. She herself got the help through me. She didn't see me, only heard the voice. I am telling her why you are forgetting. So that way it is helping. So one thought helping, another thought giving the problem. So the subconscious mind is having both. More and more good thought, what will happen? Other lady, she came and told, yesterday I was not very happy in my dream and what happened? And she was telling, I wanted to see Thakur, but I saw Goddess Kali. Every time I was praying to Thakur, please come in my dream. And Wherever I looked to search Thakur, everywhere Makali was standing. I love Makali, but I wanted Thakur at that moment, but Thakur never came. I told them, Thakur is Makali, but anyway, look at it. It's a good dream. Dream, of course, but good dream, very good dream. How it is? Because of the subconscious mind. Why constantly thinking of Kali, Sri Ramakrishna, these, that, they are seeing the picture of Sri Ramakrishna at the back, Goddess Kali standing, or sometimes Sri Ramakrishna and Goddess Kali. So all those impressions coming out from the subconscious mind. So this is the cause of the subconscious mind. And we have to be very, very careful to control the subconscious mind. And in the 10th sloka, our Sarasabahi, that is very important. You, if you possible remember, Sarasa, Swarasa, Bahi, Swa means the own, Rasa means the impression, Bahi flowing, what? All the impressions of the past life. Te Prati Prasabhoheya Sukshma, Te Prati Prasabhoheya Sukshma. Then here, Swamiji is telling that uh, slowly, slowly, this, this thing become very, very thin. This, these samskaras, they are conquered by resolve. I am going to control my mind. That is the resolve. The moment one thinks that I am going to control my mind, and immediately that form resolve, because it goes down to the subconscious mind also. Whose mind? My mind. Who is taking the resolution, decision, oath? Me. So where, where my oath, my promise, my decision will go into my mind. How it works? It will go down to my subconscious mind. Every day, every moment I have to go on sending this thought, this signal, I am going to control my mind. The moment you see something which may create problem in your mind, don't look at it. When you see, hear something, don't listen to it. If you think that by 
telling something, there will be some commotion. Don't say it. That is why Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, the great saint of Bengal, he said, Grammo katha na kahive. Grammo means ordinary. Grammo means village. Gram means village. Grammo katha means the very ordinary worldly discussion should not be done. Grammo katha na kahive. And these worldly thoughts, when whoever is talking, maybe some people, have you heard? You can understand what he's going to say. Oh, is it? It's so interesting. Like this moment, I don't have the time. I'm, I will listen afterwards when I will have the time and think that I am not going to have any moment for those words. Avoid, avoid, avoid. By that way, People will, after a few days, they will understand. They won't listen to it. One of our Swamis is there. The moment you say something, immediately, if it is not good words, immediately uh, he will either try to bring out some other topic or you will leave. So that is the way you have to. Why? Because you are taking the resolution. The moment you are taking the resolution that I am going to control my mind, te, te means those impressions. Prati prashabhaya, they cannot generate, they cannot increase their numbers. Then what happens? Sukshma, they dry. When a plant that is not getting the water or the air, and slowly, slowly it becomes the dry and it dies. Similarly, the thought, if it is not getting the listeners, if it is not getting that uh, place to discuss again and again, slowly, slowly it goes away. So that is the reason. I tried to see a movie all about the social life. I couldn't watch it more than five minutes. Why then? I thought, why this? And it's a very famous movie. Everybody appreciated. I told, what happened to me? Why I couldn't? Couldn't because for last forty years, away from that, all those type of dialogues and discussions and behavior of the family, the three brothers having three wives, the three wives having this talk and that. So many things are going on, and they are having unmarried auntie and she is creating problem. <laughs> All these things, five minutes was sufficient. And I felt how people are living within that. And then immediately uh, this particular sloka came in my mind. Te prati prashobhaya sukshma. Then I got conscious, oh, I must be careful. Because they are potent, still powerful, not totally dead in my mind. As because I am not connected with those things for last 40 years, it is very peculiar to me. But if I go on seeing those things, then it may again come back. And I should not do that. So, then I was sitting and judging myself, why I am interested to see that in the results of the political results. Am I involved in that? Then I try to rationalize and know. As because I am supporting those people without their background or the politics and all those. I am only thinking if the good people, majority of the good people, they come in power, people will be happy. When there is a well-established social system, the education, culture, that grow. And when there is a education and culture in the society, religion, it really manifests. Without the education, proper education and culture, there cannot be any religion. So obviously, I being a religious person, my only concern is to see that People are happy by practicing religion and practicing religion means it's not the only rituals. 
is also discrimination, is also judgment, is also practice of higher moral values in the life. So then I was happy, no, this is all right. I can sometimes watch the, uh, what's called uh, news in the TV and all that. One must be very, very cautious every time, every moment. And that is why Swami Vivekananda is telling, even when you are sleeping, always hold two swords of discrimination in, in your hands and go on fighting with those thoughts, cut down those thoughts, which will bring bad impression in your mind. And that is called bichara. Bichara means discrimination and this is the most difficult part in the mind because when I am discriminating, I am thinking I am correct. Unless and until you are listening to others, advance in that particular line, in that life, you won't get the different views. So you are thinking, sometimes some people in the isolated places, they are reading the same book that we are reading and they are also getting out the meaning but very, very narrow shut up meaning. Why? Because they are not open. That's why we have to listen, we have to read, we have to learn and then we have to judge. So ultimately, I am the master of my own mind and mind is the subtle impressions that is in the subconscious mind. So now as I am alert to control my conscious mind, similarly I have to work to control, to clean my subconscious mind too. And how to control the subconscious mind? Dhyana. Here Swami Vivekananda is telling in the 11, Dhyana heyastu tad brittaya. In the next uh, discussion, uh, in the next class, we will discuss how through meditation we can totally get free from that. So this is the practice part, sadhana part. The next Sunday, we will have our that fall banquet. So there will be, won't be any class, but this type of discussions will be there with the fall banquet on Sunday from 11 to 3 in the morning time. There will be a very good arrangement, not over here. We have hired a hall that's called Meadows Club. It's a very beautiful place, very uh, spacious place. So those who have not registered, you can think of registering, it will be very good. Not only that, you are just going over there and listening to the music, seeing the dances, hearing the words of the monks and other people, dignitaries, but you are supporting a good cause. Why we are organizing that? For a good cause. What is that good cause? To maintain these asrama. We are the monks and the devotees, sometimes students are coming and staying. So a lot of work is going on. Then obviously, now the winter is approaching. There are families who are very poor. Their children, they think that the Santa Claus will come and give them gifts. But the parents are not in a condition to bring that. Santa Claus means imagination, in the child's imagination. But who will be giving that gift on behalf of Santa? Parents. But if the parents cannot do, then the society like us, we should think like that. But how can we do that? Good thoughts are there, but without the money, we cannot do. And that's why I am inviting you, enjoy and at the same time support a cause. That will be very good. And the Swami is coming tomorrow evening. So he will take rest uh, the whole day on the Tuesday. And Tuesday, I usually give the discourse on Panchama Veda. But I requested that Swami, he has also agreed and he will give a talk on Sri Ramakrishna because I speak the gospel of Sri Ramakrishna, he will speak on the Sri Ramakrishna. He is a very good speaker. If you listen to him, 
So you, you'll understand. I know it's so difficult now to come because of the detour and all that, but please come. And then ask your friends also to come. And that is the Tuesday. Again, there will be Friday session. In the evening, there will be talk and on the Upanishad. And after that talk, there will be dinner. There's no charges. But the Saturday, we are charging $75 because it is a whole day retreat. And it, it will begin from 9 o'clock. It will continue up to 4, 5. So the whole day retreat, breakfast will be there, lunch will be served, and after the program, the snacks and tea, coffee will be there. So this is, and the Sunday will be gala program, that is our fall banquet. So this is all the programs that we are doing, organizing. Please come and join us, help us. And also, we will pray to Thakur, in whatever way you are coming and helping, your presence also is a help to us, encouraging to us. So that is also, and we, what we can do, we cannot bless you. At least I cannot. I don't have that power. But we can pray to Thakur. We can pray to Mother. They are present, really, believe. In so many ways we have seen, they are in the present day, they are living gods and goddesses. So we will pray to them for your well-being. Whatever the prayer that you are having. But one thing, if through that prayer you are ultimately getting some problem, that will never be granted by the God Sri Ramakrishna. It, uh, we have seen, we have so many experiences. But if it is beneficial to you, you will get that benefit. Have faith, complete faith. Thank you very much. And 23rd is our Kali Puja, right. 23rd there will be Kali Puja. And this is very interesting, the Kali. If you see that image of Goddess Kali, particularly those in the, who are in the West, as a Goddess Kali, if you see, very, very interesting figure, image. But it has a very, very interesting philosophical explanation. Why the Hindus, particularly Sri Ramakrishna worship Kali? So that answer you will try to get on that particular, if I tell now, you won't come. So, suspense should be there, please come on the Kali Puja also, and there will be Prashad, there will be Bhajan, please come and join. But it is no ritual, if you don't believe in Kali, it doesn't matter. Listen to the philosophy and you will wonder. Now, let us complete with this sloka. Uh, from uh, no Kali Puja time from six no? six thirty Arati from six thirty to seven will be our usual Vesper service and from seven it will go on and let us chant this mantra Aham Nirvikalpo Nirakara Rupo Vibhutvacya sarvatra Sarvendriyanam Navasangatam Naiva mukti namiya Chidananda Rupa Shiboham 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 Om Shanti, 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 Hari Om Tat
ಸತ್ಸತ್ ಶ್ರೀರಾಮಕೃಷ್ಣ ಅರ್ಪಣಮಸ್ತು ಸ್ವಾಮಿ ಪ್ರಬುದ್ಧಾನಂದಜಿ ಹಿ ಹಿ ವಾಸ್ ನಾಟ್ ಮೇಯಿಂಗ್ ಬೆಂಗಾಲಿ ಬಿಕಾಸ್ ಹಿ ನೇ ಬಾಸ್ ಸ್ಟೇಡ್ ಇನ್ ಬೆಲೂರ್ ಮಾಟ್ ಇನ್ ದೋಸ್ ಡೇಸ್ ಇನ್ ದೇಟ್ ಟೈಮ್ ದೇರ್ ಇಸ್ ನೋ ಟ್ರೈನಿಂಗ್ ಸೆಂಟರ್ ನಾವು ಆಲ್ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮಚಾರಿ ದೇ ಕಾಮ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಸ್ಟೇ ಫಾರ್ ಟೂ ಇಯರ್ಸ್ ಸೊ ದೇ ಲರ್ನ್ ಬೆಂಗಾಲಿ ಮೋಸ್ಟ್ ಆಫ್ ದೆಮ್ ಬಟ್ ಹಿ ವಾಸ್ ನಾಟ್ ಬಟ್ ಹಿ ಲರ್ನ್ ಬೆಂಗಾಲಿ ಸಾಂಗ್ಸ್ ಮೇ ಬಿ ದೇರ್ ಇಸ್ ಅನದರ್ ಸ್ವಾಮಿ ವಾಸ್ ದೇರ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಹಿ ಯೂಸ್ ಟು ಸಿಂಗ್ ಡಿಫರೆಂಟ್ ಟೈಪ್ ಆಫ್ ಬೆಂಗಾಲಿ ಸಾಂಗ್ಸ್ ಹಿ ಲರ್ನ್ ಇನ್ ದ ಬ್ಯಾಂಗ್ಲೋರ್ ಸೊ ಫ್ರಮ್ ದೇರ್ ವೆನ್ ಐ ಮೇಟ್ ಹಿಮ್ ದಟ್ ವಾಸ್ ಜಸ್ಟ್ ದ ಡೇ ಬಿಫೋರ್ ಹಿಸ್ ಡೆತ್ ಹಿ ಪಾಸ್ಡ್ ಅವೇ ಆನ್ ಸೆಕೆಂಡ್ ಜುಲೈ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಐ ಮೇಟ್ ಹಿಮ್ ಆನ್ ಫಸ್ಟ್ ಜುಲೈ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ವೆನ್ ಐ ಮೇಟ್ ಹಿಮ್ ಇನ್ ದ ಫಸ್ಟ್ ಜುಲೈ ಮಾರ್ನಿಂಗ್ ಹಿ ವಾಸ್ ಕಾನ್ಷಿಯಸ್ ಹಿ ರಿಸೀವ್ ದ ಗಿಫ್ಟ್ ದ್ಯಾಟ್ ಐ ಗಿಫ್ ಟು ಹಿಮ್ ಐ ವಾಸ್ ಪ್ರಿಸರ್ವಿಂಗ್ ಫಾರ್ ಹಿಮ್ ಐ ಬ್ರಾಟ್ ಇಟ್ ಫ್ರಮ್ ಇಂಡಿಯಾ he received it then I, when i bowed down because he was sitting on the uh, on his bed he patted on back and then he sang ma anandamayi niranand karuna ma and perfect pronunciation and the tune see how because he was everyone the swami is all they were reminiscences mother 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 every time she, he used to say mother is there mother will protect mother is with me and at the last moment also he showed me that picture of mother that was there in front of him they kept on the almira in the hospital that room and he said ma anandamayi mother the embodiment of bliss do not make me unhappy so that was a wonderful thing so the songs really help it goes down in the subconscious mind i will teach you two bengali songs on goddess kali you need not to learn bengali but you can